Can you hear me? Turn on your microphone, we can't hear you. Now I can hear you. So, you're next up, go ahead. Um, what was the topic? Did you hear what everybody was saying about trust and trauma? I'm a medicator. 
a long time meditator, and both Chloe Cheetah and I, uh, we have a really, we both have a common friend, an excellent human being, Osho. And so, and I wonder how it could transcend it and if I could reproduce it. Then Bodhi Chita talked to me. Um, he said he liked smoking weed, and I grew some for Samantha. I grew some premium weed, by the way. Mm. <laughs> and so I he said that he uses this in a therapeutic sense, so I decided to use it in a therapeutic sense to transcend my trauma. And he was absolutely correct. I was able to do it. I didn't think I could do it using uh, a substance because I'm a meditator, but I wanted to see if it had validity. And I was certainly able to release a trauma. And I actually was able to release it, release it a little bit more quickly than I anticipated. And so what smoking smoke is, was, and it was only you could have been one of the trades, hey. right? What it did it was it physically brought me to a point where I could feel the trauma, I re-witnessed the trauma, and in re-witnessing the trauma in the third party way of witnessing it, it released. But not only did it release something very golden came through me and said, no more of these dudes. You know, it's fascinating today, but it all ended. And I noticed that I would meet people and they would be somewhat abusive to me because I was attracting that. But all stopped. It all stopped. So, you know, I put it to the test and I didn't know, I didn't have any anticipation when I did the uh, investigation on it, I didn't have any anticipation for a result. I just wanted to see. And of course, I let Bodhi Chia know. But it actually is totally doable. And it's easy. But keep in mind, my view on smoking marijuana is just to get you past the hurdle. And then after that, I noticed my meditations were far superior because that initial trauma, now the trauma also is located in that part of the head as a memory, but it's located in the body. I found it in the body down by my belly button, and then I realized how this chakra really worked, or what I prefer to call it as an energy center, because I use my own words. And so I realized how that actually worked, and then I decided, well, it works pretty mechanical, it works this way, this way, and this way. Can I put that on to a different one? And I have discovered that in transcending trauma, it's always a certain pattern, a step. That's really rather simple. But when you transcend it, it's, it's you're overwhelming. Now, you retain the memory of it. Did the duck go on? You yes. retain the memory of it, but not the impact. The impact is completely removed. The memory is there. Because I have post-traumatic stress disorder, I have hypervigilance. Now there's two sides of hypervigilance, and this might be in the end of the dark side too, but there's this incredibly positive side to it as well. So it's kind of like mean, you get a gift from, I got a gift from the abuse, and I got very negative. For years I focused on the negative, and then when I saw the positive side of hypervigilance, I go, well oh, this is like really, I need to explore this further. I feel like I said it enough. Okay. That was terrific. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> What are we speaking on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, trauma. <laughs> what country? <laughs> what country? Nah, trauma, trust, love, myself. Hmm. I don't know. I, I never thought of my adoption being a traumatic situation. It's never, it, it shouldn't be traumatic in any way. Maybe like the way people, how I, definitely how I felt, the feeling of like identity and like at that age, at, at a young age and growing was something, but there is a certain point where I, I finally was just like, it doesn't matter what anyone else feels or thinks for like me and my family, like the way we are, what what I am is just what it is. So um, then I'm thinking of recently, um, I don't know, there was just this 
girl I was talking to that I've had like a lot of like muddled up like feelings about and then one night me and my friends we I went to a party this and that and I like was sorry and like passing but like it like struck me so like hard like the emotions and energy and usually I don't have a lot of stuff flowing in me like just other than just me moving and going with like the flow of things so when those things happened I was kind of sitting there like going <laughs> oh man this and that being all sorrowful and whatever but then I sit in there and I just realized that like me and my friend were kind of like sitting in like sadness and I I didn't like it so I, I chose to stand up and like leave it and like just keep moving forward so something also I've been thinking about that kind of under it while listening to everyone's speaking about traumas and I think for myself what I've figured out is just like standing up and moving out of it because it's like where it's like you're stuck. It's you let, like you're letting yourself be stuck in this feeling. Of course, in more traumatic situations, more extreme traumatic situations, like you're saying, it's mind body affects more. But for myself, I think I've I've been learning to stand up and move out of it, and not and not linger in the feelings and the memories and the pain it's almost like it kind of feels nice to do it in a sense like you're kind of like petting yourself in a way but for me I just found it to be something like that it happened now I need to you know move forward list and I rewrote that list 
and I meditated, and I, and I stayed in the woods all night, and I made a fire, and I, I, let, it, I let it go, you know, and that was really big for me, and I, so, um, uh, I, I was doing dynamic meditation, and I was told um, by whatever energy you want to call it to stay in the woods and write down every everyone who's ever hurt you, every 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 hurt. I mean, from from top to bottom, write the list down and write a letter to that person. And if you can find that person, send that letter to them. If, you know, and I did. I, I, I did. And then I wrote down, I, I repeated that note, and I built a fire, and meditated all night, and I, and I, and I had a, a, a book burning with the books and stuff that were garbage <laughs> at first. And then, um, and then I forgave everybody, and, and I let it go. And that release was so huge for me. It, 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 it released a weight off of me that I can't explain because um, I held on to um, to all that pain, and by doing that, and actually forgiving and being and um, uh, was the beginning of my new path, my walk, my uh, the new awareness, consciousness. affected me deeply. Uh, I was loved and respected, and I loved and respected in return. Uh, I was I was taught that that was the way to live your life from a very early age. And I have uh, been very, very fortunate. However, when I start thinking in terms of trusting in self, and basically, I think what you're, what I've heard is that you let go of the ego, <clears throat> or the me, and you trust in yourself. And when I think in those terms, I have a real hard time getting my head around that because what that does is it places me alone and away, connected to the Creator, but then, in, but then, I get this sense of, well, wait a minute, yeah, it's really cool if I could just sit here and be content with the Creator, or with the Divine, or whatever you want to call it. But I have responsibilities. I have, I have a life. I have a son. You know, sons. And if I were to talk in terms of what trauma I've experienced, it may be what I did that facilitated his trauma, which, you know, presents in, in my heart a sense of guilt, a sense of, you know, responsibility that maybe I should have paid a lot more attention to the situation and helped him at an early age. You know, and that's, I don't know, that's all part of life. I don't I'm not sure, other than my blood pressure being high, that I'm actually experiencing the consequences of the traumas around me. You know, my, all, all three of my sons have, were affected by my first marriage. And in their own way, they're all dealing with it, you know. So, you know, I, I trust that I'm going to be okay. But I'm, I'm very much in tune with trying to facilitate in some form or fashion 
a better environment for those that I love around me. And that, ha and that is maybe where the problem comes in because maybe I'm screwing it up. <laughs> maybe I should just let it all go and let, let them all figure it out on their own. And that, that's very difficult for a father to do. Yeah, I know about codependency and all that kind of stuff, but you know, it's a very deep inner feeling that I have that I need to help. But I know that in the act of helping that I could actually be hurting. So I, it's, it's, that is a mystery to me. That's all I have to say. So, um, growing up, I really, in my eyes, you know, looking back, I really don't feel like I had trauma that, like, a lot of you shared, and even, like, the, the um, new patient that you have, that the two-and-a-half-year-old, I never really had anything like that happen to me until about a year ago. Um, I had a really, it was, I ended up in the hospital, and I was in the hospital for a week, and it was something that... I had no control over, and when that happened to me, it was kind of like an eye-opening event, where now I guess I have trust in others because I try to I try to look at everything from all perspectives, not just my own perspective. Um, for instance, I had my sister and I. My sister is a little bit old; she's 13 years older than I am, but. For some reason, we're both kind of on the same same development. I don't know how to really explain it, but she kind of comes down to my level, and we always act kind of more that we're closer in age than farther apart. And recently, she was actually mad at me because I did not yell at her for something that she did to me. Um, she told my mother a secret of mine that I didn't want my mom to know and just disregarded, you know, what my wishes were and went and told my mom. But the reason why I did not get mad at her is because I thought about it from her perspective of, well, maybe she did it for a reason. She did it to, to help someone, to help my younger brother. Go the secret that I had and I forgave her because it's not if I was in her shoes I would have done the same thing so living my life that way of thinking about it from all perspectives has I guess helped with trusting people but with the I guess the trauma in my life, I always think about it as someone else has it worse than I do. So I can't really be upset and I can't let what happened to me affect me because there's people that have it worse than I do. And I guess that's the way I was raised is someone else has it worse, like, you know, it, going down to like eating dinner. Oh, I don't like what you cook for dinner. But my mom's response would be, well, there's kids in Africa that are starving. So, you, got, you know, like that is just an example of the way I was raised. You know, that that's a traumatic event, not, you know, what I live. When I was growing up, it was a starving children in Europe. So, <laughs> <laughs> <a> classic <laughs> The, the camera's running out of battery. It's hmm? running out of battery? Yeah. It's about there. We have enough. Turn it off for a minute. No. She's going to switch it back. Stop it for a second. So, I think 
what, what's been interesting sitting here and, and getting to go kind of a little bit later in this in this uh, sh sharing is that I can relate to everything that's been said in one way or another. Um, Doug, Peter, Sam, Sam, uh, Teresa, uh, and it, you know, it's been. I've had I, I've experienced quite a few traumas in the last five years, um, from the reason I met Bodie in the first place to losing both of my parents to you know, just a lot of stuff. And there's been uh, there's been a commonality in the way that I've at least attempted in some respects to move beyond. And I think it's that uh, acceptance and. One of the things I was so critical of my mother for was that when she started to become ill um, psychologically, uh, I my, oh, my only wish for her was to take care of herself. Mom, please just take care of yourself. We're all fine. Okay, please just take care of yourself. And I started to think about that when I went after she passed away, and I started to look at myself and how I was handling it and losing dad, it was that same thing. It was Larry. You've got to stop worrying about everyone else and everything else and, and just just work on how do I get past this. Some of the approaches that you know, Bodhi gave me as far as release, that, that catharsis of talking to a picture and getting all of those emotions that continued to bubble up at strange times of the day, driving or a song or a moment. Um, I realized how much of that I had been repressing. And every time it came up, I would distract myself with, you know, with something else. You know, sometimes it may have been a drink. Sometimes it may have been a run. Sometimes it may have been changing the radio station. Um, but it all comes back to, you know, you have to face it. It's there, right? And the more you ignore it, the more you give it strength. And finally, accepting that life is life, and we're in this together and it's a flow and all the beautiful words that others have used in, in this discussion is is the only thing that I, I think any of us can really do um, is to recognize it for what it is and to look at it, become aware of your emotions and attachment to it and then let it evaporate. And much easier said than done. I'm not all the way there in any shape or form. Um, I feel like the one for my mother is the closest. Dad is a lot harder. He was a lot deeper. <laughs> and the conversations and what we shared and close, right? So that one is, uh, but th then again, there's the, the there, there's a position of, of overcoming the trauma and overcoming him not being here and appreciating the memory, continuing to love that and continuing to cherish those things because I won't let those go. I, I 
achieved this, that's what I was supposed to do, so now why am I not able to do it? And that's so frustrating. And this wasn't supposed to be the life that I was supposed to have. But um, things come into my life all the time that let me know you need to trust yourself that you're going to be able to do it. And you're able to overcome this trauma yourself. You're, you'll be able to overcome this as well. And knowing that these things happen for a reason, um, I trust that. And that I'll be able to get over this trauma. I met Boda. And that was exactly what I was asking for uh, from the universe. And like, for instance, when I lived in New York City and I'd be broke, oh my gosh, I need some money, I need some money. And I get a residual check from nine years ago from a job that I had. How does that happen? And so meeting, meeting Chidi felt exactly the same way and then coming and doing this. And when I have a little, little letdown, I find the Tibetan thing in my house to let me know, yes, this is the right path. Uh, something that was very significant to what we're doing. To say, don't lose hope. Don't think that, okay, I'm not doing this right. This is where you're supposed to be. So I trust that I am moving in the right direction and I trust that everything in the universe, God and everything is, is giving me little hints that, yep, you're you're still there, a little encouragement. So I tr have trust in that. that I, I would be, I feel ignorant uh, and looking so inside the box if I if I ignored that. It seems so ridiculous. You ready for the turn? Somehow, through those experiences, there has been a trusting, a trusting that existence is the one who is steering the ship, as much as I'd like to think that it's me. And what more can you do but trust it and move on? I mean, there's. There's, I, in the beginning, this last time, I was really resisting having the house flooded and having to pull it apart and start over again. And then all of a sudden, it came to me, you know, this is, this is what's meant to be right now. So let's just move on with it. And that's, that's how most of these traumatic events have been for me. Eventually I see that this is what's up for me at the moment and to cooperate with it. Otherwise I waste a lot of energy resisting and doing poor me number and, the, and holding on to that story. That's another one. Hold on to that story. The quicker I can drop that, let go of the story and forget about that particular instance and just be in the moment, the faster the trauma just disappears. Um, just about four or five days ago, I walked into the what had been a cinder block shell and is now in the process of being put back together. 
thanks to Sam and his crew and Sam Jr. And it suddenly struck me that, oh wow, I'm getting a new house. <laughs> and right there, it turned around. You know, it was, oh, okay, all right. So the next thing is the cabinets and this and that and the other thing. And, 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 and with that, I could feel the energy release. And it was suddenly, ah, oh, all right. <laughs> Yes, it's okay. Oh. Personally, I don't know exactly what has been very like traumatic to me. I know like there's been situations like if it's even on like a minor scale of what traumatic is. What I think about though, just like off rip, I think about um, the domestication in my life, I guess. Just like when I say that, I just mean like how like being raised, like how my parents want me to be versus how I want to be. And like I can, I can definitely feel, I can definitely feel the difference like of like that. I, when I was growing up, I knew that I didn't want to be what they were really like pushing me and I didn't like the feeling that I had from like I know I didn't want to be a doctor I know I didn't want to be a lawyer but I know I didn't want to be an engineer but like these are the things that I was pushing to be I feel but and that I almost felt inadequate because I wanted to please my parents but I understood that I wasn't really I knew that I wouldn't be happy doing these things but then there's like a conflict like within me of like I'm maybe not feeling like I'm doing the right thing because I'm not doing what my parents would want me to do. So, but I in, in the end I knew that I had to do what I what I did. And in turn, by like doing what I want and just like learning how to do what I want, like I was like I was like the start of like loving myself. Not even I don't even want to say the start because like I feel like there's like other parts for sure. For sure, like I was like loving myself, like just whatever, just like doing what I want, watching what I want, like games and stuff like that. But then just the, the deeper parts of it, and as I as I kept doing more and like and found like passions of what I love to actually like do and what I knew I wanted to make and like create for my my life, like that's when those things ended up like leaving me but like as I was loving myself like I was growing in other areas as, as well like especially like after the time period after coming here and just like what it took for me to like to grow as a musician like that I grew as a person as well like I just it, it helped me learn how to how to be more and how to just like just the whole process of of loving myself and just all the different things that I that I took to heart I would say but just things that I knew that I wanted to keep with me for myself that like, my own decisions just helped me feel better about it and now I'm like at a point where like I'm like I'm definitely not like worried about what they think. Like sometimes maybe it might come maybe that's something that's not completely like lost within me but like now now I know that like I'm diving like deeper into me just being and not worrying about what they're thinking. And I'm and I feel like it's traumatic just because it affected me and it wasn't a good feeling. I guess I could classify as that, but I know that now, like, I'm really working towards being me, like, doing what I want to do, per se, and not living for somebody else. Thank you. Uh, almost. trauma that we have all suffered, fresh, really got to it, which is that our parents, our priests, our teachers, our whole society 
has an idea of what we ought to be. And each one of us has an individual nature that has many roots, biological, past lives, astrological. And there's a continuous conflict in every person between manifesting their individuality or wearing the personality that your society says you ought to wear. Clear? And where trust fits into this is that as you more and more trust yourself, you can pick up the signals inside about what should I really do now even though my mom says this and my boss says that and my kids say that and my husband says that, you know. But nobody's opinion is right for you. You have to trust that you can tune in and when you're perfectly tuned in, and I think you said this before, you're one with the universe. There was a great Chinese mystic in the third century. He was in prison, about to be murdered by the emperor for shut, not shutting up. And he wrote the sentence, he who knows he is one with the universe, is he not the real sage? Sakito, five centuries later, on hearing this sentence, became enlightened himself. I've heard that's what enlightenment is, when you are in tune with the universe, when God is within you and without you when you're not different than the divine, then trust happens. So everything we've been doing so far, they're all different ways of looking at the same process of tuning into yourself, knowing yourself, loving yourself, trusting yourself. We got one more on trusting yourself and we'll go on from there. The essence of all meditation is watching your mind, watching your feelings, your thoughts, your actions, indifferently. But for the next month, add another one. Tune in, are you trusting yourself or are you just going through the motions because you think it's the right thing? Just see how you tuned into yourself. Do you trust what's happening? Are you in the state of trust? You can't judge it by what the other guy does. It's a state of at one attunement of ourselves. I'm going to break early today because several people have to leave her. Anybody got anything else they want to say before we split? Yeah. So, a couple of interesting things. So like, as you were saying that, I was getting kind of like, agitated on the inside, but like it was a good like, kind of fervent energy. And something that hit me like pre I was going through um, a lot of different things. Um, just like physically wasn't eating enough. Just like not didn't have good health, stressed out a lot, and I found myself breaking down like multiple occasions. And but really, I went to Houston because of Irma. My parents got hit by Harvey. I'm sitting there here talking to my mom and everything about stuff that I'm doing and about how I've been meeting with you and doing all these different things and learning a lot of different stuff and just trying to figure out exactly what. And how how about how and about and about the way I want to go about doing things that I want to do, 
and then my mom told me that I'm very intense. <laughs> and so like in that moment, I got kind of mad. I was like, what do you mean intense, mom? I'm trying to like figure out what's wrong with me, you know, it's something like that. And then in this situation, you, you just say like how we all have our individual natures. And recently, a couple of days ago, talking to this girl and like we're having a conversation, she says that I'm very intense. That like we, I'd, I was speaking to her and then I went to go talk to somebody else because they had grabbed my attention for a second. And then I came back and I was way more relaxed. And she said that I seemed like a completely different Peter in that moment. That I just switched from this really intense, passionate like moment to like, <sighs> like Zen, you know? So I, I was thinking like, man, is this a problem? Is this something like that I'm too intense or something like that? Like, am, is there, I was thinking about the expectations that you were thinking of now just recently of like the idea, but now I'm starting to realize if I feel that naturally, like I can't, I really can't stop it. Like I wanna like jump out and run, run away and like go live my life right now and just go. But like that's the feeling then I guess that's my natural individual nature in that sense. Other thing was before I came here, I was at the gym and it was funny we had it kid in my class was having a conversation with me t telling me about um he asked me if I was spiritual or religious I told him that I, d I don't follow any religions that I'm definitely I would hope to consider myself as spiritual like getting to understand my spirit and others and then we had this whole conversation before like I left and we were talking about truth and in, the, in turn we were, I was talking about trust and I said that I feel like the truth all the truth in general is everything, is the universe, you know, and that, like, we try to divide, like, God in ourselves, but, you know, something interesting that someone in that conversation had said that, like, ourselves become God, but it's not God, but more so the universe, it's just the, this language that we use that is so very divisive in the ways that we try to separate things but there is no separation it is just the flow is just everything which i was trying to like and so he was he was having the confliction with that because he was very objective with his um feelings but I, I thought it was very interesting how i literally just had that conversation before coming here and then i hear this here so and i enjoyed every you hearing from everyone and i learned got a got a lot from everyone today so thank you Thank you, guys. Thank okay. you. Thank you again today. This is done? Yeah. Should we stop? Yeah, my man.